Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Love for Intuitive Astrology. My name is Michelle and today I will talk about this full moon in Virgo that will happen on the 7th of March 2023. I will start off with uh, the general explanation of this full moon in Virgo and then we're going to all the signs. I recommend you to watch your sun sign and your rising sign, also called your ascendant. And then you can also watch your moon sign. Um, so yeah, this full moon in Virgo will be on the 7th of March, which is in the month where we also see the switch of uh, Saturn moving into the sign of Pisces, which will happen on the same day, depending on your location. But that's going to have a huge effect, okay? And then later in the month, we're going to have Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius. So it's it's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster, okay? Like, I don't like fear-mongering and these kind of things because I do feel we are on the verge of huge changes. And we already feel that we are going towards that direction because a lot of people are really feeling their emotions going up and down. Um, you know, one day you're feeling really good and the other day you're feeling maybe really sad. There is a lot of emotional release happening. So just let it out right if you feel like uh, it needs a release just let it out um yeah it's gonna it's a little bit like restless energy so on one hand we have all planets direct so we're feeling this energy like moving forward and there's a part of us that is really like optimistic wants to move forward wants to get stuff done and then there's a lot of a restless energy in the air you know like you almost feel like there is this division and I've been shown this in my meditations right that right now we're going to see a big split in the upcoming times months years where the light is growing stronger and so is the darkness okay and this sounds a little bit like, a, you know, like a Star Wars movie, but in reality, it's going to be like that. So more and more people start to awaken, start to have interest in astrology, start to have interest in meditation, uh, starting to face their emotions because they're going to be brought to the surface, right? It's like now we're going to have Saturn moving into the sign of Pisces which is ruled by the, you know, Pisces rules, the 12th house. This is the last sign. This is about uh, removing karma. Uh, this is about releasing the subconscious programming. Uh, and this full moon is definitely going to highlight what needs to be healed. And we're going to have a square with Mars. And Mars is in Gemini, right? And Gemini is ruled by Mercury, and so is Virgo right and this we call it a t-square so we have the sun in in pisces <laughs> uh, opposing um the moon in virgo and it's squaring mars and this is kind of boiling up tensions when it comes to communication right because if pisces is the subconscious and if virgo is the conscious but it is about communication right mental activity um, and Mars is going to give you a breakthrough, yeah, right? It's yeah. the masculine energy that's saying, okay, let's move forward. Uh, let's go into war. Let's have a battle. So yeah, yeah. there is going to be a huge tension in the air. I really hope that people are going to use this energy for good because there will be this, uh, anger coming up, uh, a lot of arguments, um, and this is also an anger that probably was felt before, but needs a release. Okay, so there might be sudden decisions. People are going to make sudden decisions out of nowhere that maybe you didn't see coming. Because Gemini is also, a, it's decisions, right? It's the twins. Um, it, it sees different perspectives, perspectives, but also can switch sides. First, I was on this side, but now I'm going to be on that side because now I have more information. So now I can see things from a different perspective. Okay. So 
you know, that's why Gemini likes to see the different perspectives. And Virgo is a more inward energy. Uh, it wants to learn. It wants to kind of not be too much out there, right? Virgo doesn't want to really step on people's toes in a way, but also can be critical, uh, can be realistic, and doesn't like no nonsense. So if all this combination, and then we have Pisces, the subconscious, right? Swimming in different directions, but Mars is not going to let Pisces swim away. It's like, let's just face this tension, okay? So we're going to go through the signs and see where this is going to happen in your chart. So, you know, astrology can prepare you a little bit about what's coming. Uh, of course, in the end, and this is why I chose to do intuitive astrology, because the astrology chart is your blueprint. This is what you're born with. And, but we do have the power to change part of our destiny. We do have a, a choice to step out of certain karmas by good deeds and by certain um, activities, right? So we don't know what we've done in past lives, if you believe in past lives, which um, I do. Um, this is also shown by Pisces or the 12th house, right? This is what we have done in the past. And my work as an intuitive astrologer is to get you <laughs> out of this, uh, I almost want to say matrix that, or this blueprint and go above that blueprint so you can live a more spiritual life and you can actually, this is where you're going to be a better manifester. This is where you're, you can attract the things that you want because you have to first remove the blocks and this is why some people cannot manifest certain things because you have to go through the lessons or you have to um, dissolve this karma through different methods okay uh, and then there's also timing which can be shown by astrology as well so it's all very complicated uh, I'm not saying that I have all the answers but this is through my own research and what is very prominent right now is that we have Jupiter conjuncting Chiron and Venus. So this is a beautiful alignment where there can be a lot of healing, right? So we're going back through the healing and also to, you know, because Aries, these planets are in Aries, by the way. <laughs> and this is, you know, Aries is all about identity. This is about healing also the masculine, right? Healing the masculine. Um, you know, we had a rise of femininity, but in some ways this femininity made uh, the society in some ways more dull. So we need to heal the masculine side of ourselves. And this doesn't mean masculine means men. No, masculine energy is um, helping you to fulfill tasks, right? That's masculine energy. So if you're a woman, you also need to get the job done sometimes, right? And this is your masculine energy and your feminine energy is more laid back. So there's going to be a massive healing and identity, masculine energy. And also there is a huge opportunity to heal your woundings and love right? Maybe the things, the patterns that kept repeating itself when it comes to relationships. Um, but also Venus is money and Jupiter is optimism. So maybe you're finally starting to feel optimistic again. Like what has prevented you from having faith in yourself, in others, the universe or God, whatever it is that you believe in, right? So it is a very strange time. It's like it's the best time and the worst time at the same time, right? There's bad things, really terrible things happening. And then there's really good things happening. And we really have to stand into our own power as a collective. And this is what Pluto in Aquarius wants us to do. Um, and during this full moon in Virgo, Pluto is on his last degree 
right? Uh, before it moves into your Aquarius. Obviously, it's not done in Capricorn yet. It will come back. It will just be uh, in Aquarius a uh, few months. Come back, right? And it will be like that a few times. I make a, made a video about it. You can check it out. Um, you know, and then there is the moon in Virgo. And Virgo wants to organize. But also, the moon is your emotions. So organize your emotions, uh, really analyze how you're really feeling because Virgo likes to analyze. And I can tell you as a Virgo that that's very true. My mind is working over hours sometimes. I like to know everything but this and that and that and that. Like very detailed. <laughs> um, and it can drive people crazy as well. But at the same time, uh, it is about looking at the details that other people overlook. So with this full moon in Virgo, what emotions, what things in your life, depending on where Virgo is, are you overlooking and need uh, a little bit of a critical eye, okay? So we have Uranus trining the sun. Uranus is in Taurus, right? And I know that there were some earthquakes and especially in this uh, I, I believe it was the full moon or was it new moon in Pisces when we had a square. So that was, you know, Uranus in an earth sign is creating earthquakes. Okay. Um, so it's not going to be completely over yet. It's a sextile in a triangle. It's just a softer placement. I don't like to do uh, worldly predictions because I'm more focused on individuals, right? Because I think it's more important that we stay in alignment but definitely, you know, when it comes to worldly stuff, Uranus in an earth sign, right? It's a shake on the earth, right? Um, just want to make sure that everybody stays safe and listen to your intuition. And that's why I'm here to help you stay in your intu intuition because intuition is real. And when we listen to our inner guidance, um, and we get clarity in our bodies and in ourselves, our lives can, uh, you know, our guides can help us go through certain situations and life lessons. Um, what else can I say? I mean, the sun is in a very loose conjunction with Neptune as well. So again, it's going to give you a lot of spiritual insights as well. We have Mercury, the Sun, and Neptune in Pisces. So you will feel that you're, a lot of people are starting to wake up. Like, you know, I look on the internet, I see more and more people coming up. And, you know, it's going to really show us the situation of where we're at, right? And if we're... All together, waking up, we can, you know, Mother Nature will be less upset, you know, that we're becoming more conscious. And this is why, you know, Virgo, green, element of Earth, we have to start taking care of the Earth. And then we are in Pisces season, we have to start taking care of the water, right? Um, and this is very important right now. Um, okay, let's move on to all the signs. So, yeah, okay, let's start with Aries. So, Aries, Sun, Rising, Moon. <laughs> and for you, I mean, you have Jupiter in your sign together with Chiron, together with Venus. So, Aries, you have a certain magnetism around you right now. It's like people are going to be super drawn to you, they want to talk to you. Um, maybe you're getting messages from people like, how are you doing? How are you feeling, you know? And with Virgo there, full moon in Virgo in your sixth house, you're gonna wanna look into your health situation. So do you wanna start like a new diet, go to the gym more often, and also have a rest because Pisces is in your 12th house and Aries, you are preparing for your season, right? You're preparing to take action and you are feeling very uplifted right now, but don't go too fast because you still need some rest around this full moon. Um, Mars is in your third house, okay? And it's squaring the 12th and the 6th. 
with this T-square that I'm explaining at the beginning of the video. And this is really that right now, uh, watch out with, for example, if you feel like you're angry at something, you could get like a uh, migraine, right? Uh, because you have Virgo in the sixth house and this can give, uh, because Mercury rules also sixth house. This is about uh, migraines or anxiety, overthinking about stuff. This uh, will be extra heightened. So make sure to write down or meditate right if there's something bothering you and talk to this person when you are calm when you feel secure that you want to talk about that also if you have some conflict with a sibling this could be you know there could be some argument happening with siblings um yeah and also drive safe around this day okay Pay attention, don't be in the clouds because Pisces season in the clouds, right? Uh, this is also a great time to meditate and to really, you know, find this peace within. So your health is very important as well. And I mean, Pluto is on the last degree in Capricorn. So what lessons have you learned lately when it comes to your work? Your work situation right 10th house okay let's get a card for you dealing dealings or dealing with a woman and i feel areas for some of you i know that this is very specific but for some of you that are watching you have a difficult relationship with your sister and there might be some words i can see like some jealousy from a woman someone that Cause you're like kind of thriving you're healing a big part of your identity like i i feel like your self-love is is growing and you're starting to appreciate yourself so much more not everybody likes where you're going but you know as a detached person <laughs> that doesn't know you i think keep going keep healing keep shining don't uh put yourself smaller because people want you smaller okay you are now this is your year to shine this is your year to show people what you're capable of okay this is not the time to to play small to make other people feel better this is not the time okay uh light-hearted carefree time look at that like some of you when you want to maybe go on a holiday have some tea have some yeah love yourself time some yeah like go work out and then relax i don't know do something that makes you feel carefree if you can i don't know your situation um i'm getting october so either some of you have started a new job last october or you will be this october if you're looking for something or you will change you know I don't want to say you're unemployed until October. Um, yeah, there's something with autumn as well. Like maybe some of you are really into, into autumn, into this time of the year. It might be that for some it's a uh, depressive time, but for you it's not. Yeah. Let me know in the comments if that if that's you. Pay attention to your finances, okay? We do have Uranus in your second house. Um, so pay attention to your finances because, you know, it has been very up and down. Maybe finance was coming in, was going out. I mean, Uranus is like very insecure. And in order to have secure income with Uranus, and this is from someone with Uranus in my natal chart. Um, you can make money through Uranus activities, right? So this is the internet, online business, astrology, science, everything out of the box. So even if you do like a side hustle, this is good to do something out of the box. Something that's, yeah, kind of like free. But I do definitely feel that it's more money coming in at this time. 
last card protected from negative forces beyond your control so you're like super protected right now areas like yeah <laughs> some of you are afraid of spiders <laughs> yeah i see flowers so if you can buy some flowers in the home new flowers greens put your feet in the grass to ground yourself right it's a Virgo full moon, so this is also about your health. Yeah, going outside more if you're too much in the home. Yeah, we're going to the park or to the forest. Or maybe just your backyard if you have grass in the backyard. Okay, so this is my message for you, my amazing areas. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I do private readings as well. You find my email in the description box below. And... Uh, Thank you for your love and all the best to you. Let's move on to the next sign of Taurus. So this is for Taurus, Sun, Moon and Rising. And this full moon in Virgo is in your fellow Earth sign. And this is in your fifth house. And fifth house is about kids. It's about romance. Um, you are now going to like... This time where you're going maybe out a lot, you're meeting a lot of people, but Saturn is moving into your sign now or into um, the 11th house of friendships, I mean. So you're now looking for people that you can hang out with on the long term. So maybe you're like really filtering like, okay, I'm going to these groups, right? I'm here to have a lot of fun, but I'm also looking for long term friendships, right? Saturn doesn't want to just have fun without thinking about the long term um, and in general Taurus you are a sign that's very committed um, you don't do things half you know <laughs> glass half full no if you have your mind set on something as the fixed sign you are you're gonna go for it right this is when you are in your element um, so yeah romance maybe a friend that will turn into something more taurus this could definitely happen around this full moon um you have jupiter chiron and venus in your 12th house so there will be a lot of things happening behind the scenes so maybe you have a secret someone has a secret crush on you or you on someone else uh, make sure that this is not i mean this is also placements for some people to start an affair i'm not here to judge just make sure that if you are that person and you're watching um that you really think this true okay that you're not hurting people in that situation then um it's a good time to read maybe you want to read books really dive into some of you are maybe into self-development as well and i don't know why i have to say it i'm also reading i have been working with that in my readings but maybe you're interested in human design or uh, astrology something intellectual that you want to explore uh, because you some of you definitely could have a lot of um, how do you say that transcendental experiences and you want to put a name to it yeah and mars is in your second house it's squaring the 11th and 5th okay so make sure that there's not gonna be any arguments about money with friends with your kids right if your kids are a bit older that you make good agreements who pays what and when you know not that you go away with your friends and that you're paying for everyone or someone else is paying for everyone and there's going to be some type of argument happening okay so pluto for the ones that have taurus ascendant um do i say that right yeah very close to between zero and five degrees your Pluto is going to be super close to your midheaven. And this will majorly transform your work situation. Okay. So this will be, yeah, 
this is going to bring massive transformations actually um, you might go from one job to a complete different job or you will see the reality of the company that you work at maybe you're super happy or maybe you're super not happy right because pluto is showing the shadow side of the situation this could be good or bad but it has to come out so if you're not in the right job or in the right um maybe your talent is something else than what you, what you're doing and this could be right now disrupted and that's why also there could be a square with Mars because you're worrying about money maybe that the thing that you want to do you think that it cannot make money but actually you know maybe you're wrong <laughs> maybe you can right um at least you can try but you know follow your intuition on that okay Taurus parting ways of romance or business this is what we just talked about so some of you are definitely going through also break up with south node in the seventh house this could be uh because south node can release you from old karma so in the seventh house is marriage so some of you are going through divorce right not saying that's for everyone for some of you it's just that you're going to be focusing more on your independence in a relationship but or parting a business yeah and if that's the case you know just trust that there's something better out there for you no we have things will not always be this way a change is coming cut a caterpillar right so this is about you turning into a butterfly and this sounds super cheesy but you're in the stage where you're like maybe a little bit blindsided it's like <laughs> where do i go exactly i'm not sure what's my next step like this feeling of i'm feeling stuck but i'm not sure if it's i, I need to go left or right what <laughs> yeah broke like wish will not be granted but this feels like you feel maybe that it, you failed yourself like if something didn't work out the way you wanted to maybe you you feel like you filled yourself uh but know that everything happens for a reason okay a distant friend is thinking of you okay this is when i come back to maybe a secret lover i don't know someone is thinking about you or a friend that you parted with before is thinking about you so yeah okay yeah that's my message for you taurus i was thinking if i maybe forgot something but that's my message for you thank you so much for watching uh, if you want to book a private reading with me you find the details in the description box below and i'll see you next time so let's move on to the next sign of gemini so my lovely gemini's this is for everybody with sun moon or rising in gemini and for you we have this full moon in your fourth house and fourth house is family it's moving some of you are moving on this date um starting a new job because we also have this the moon in virgo opposing pisces in the 10th house we also have mercury there so maybe you just signed a contract for a new job that you just started we also have saturn especially if you have first few degrees uh gemini ascendant between zero and five degrees you will have saturn on your mid heaven or very close to it so there might be a new responsibility happening when it comes to work or you will become a parent this is also placement that makes you divide time maybe between taking care of uh, of the family of having a child or maybe taking care of a family member and a new job so you're gonna have to uh spend your time wisely then we have Jupiter, Chiron, and Venus in the 11th house. So this is also a time for you to have lots of fun, right? Maybe this is something you haven't done in a while. But now it's time to have fun, to get out there. Maybe you're going to restore some new friendships because we have Jupiter, Venus, and Chiron in conjunction. But this is very optimistic, very fun. Um... But yeah, I do see some difficult because we have a square with Mars is still in your sign in the first house. And it's squaring the sun and moon in the fourth and tenth. So there is a tension between family and work, right? 
there might be some argument either with the family or either with work like maybe you can't make it in time uh sometimes or you know you couldn't show up the way you wanted to right um yeah but overall this is a positive time uranus is in your 12th house uh, sextiling the sun in the tent so you will have some really good ideas at this time that you can use for your work like some snaps that are gonna be like aha moments yeah maybe you share yeah hmm okay let's get you a card oh we have Pluto so close to the ninth house right of belief systems of you will do a lot of research, maybe in the esoteric topics. Some of you will definitely do research in astrology because it will go into the sign of Aquarius, which is uh, also related to astrology. You might want to travel more or go on a research trip for work where you do inv you're investigating. You could also start a, a new religion, a new belief system. Make sure to not try to convince other people of what you believe it's also a time to start a new study right maybe you're um, into science and you're starting a new scientific study compliments from an admirer gemini i feel like maybe even someone will give you flowers or yeah you're very seen like very magnetic at this time this 11th house is about having fun. This is also a good time to um, maybe release some, a product that you have, uh, to socialize, to get out there, just to have fun. And this is how you can draw in love at this time if you're single. Getting January. Hmm. Maybe you're in a cold place or you were in a cold place in January yeah it's like you have a feeling that someone around you is lying to you about where they were or what they were doing i can explain it to you but this is a message for someone for sure you're doubting if someone speaks the truth or not and i have to tell you listen to your gut feeling because you already know that they're not speaking the truth yeah an arrogant boastful person you should not cross right so you know when people invalidate you and and don't uh listen to you or to your feelings or don't validate your feelings <clears throat> that's how it feels like someone is angry with you just breathing and honestly that's not your problem and myself i had to deal with this a lot growing up that i came from a family that just cut you off like feelings were not allowed <clears throat> it was like really harsh family situation like don't cry just do whatever don't complain you know the less emotions the better <laughs> i was raised to be like i don't know like a warrior kind of type hmm november getting two months here so some of you your birthday is in november or you're planning a holiday in November or you went on a holiday but I feel like there are some memories that are surfacing yeah it's like you finally can see a way out in a sense of having fun again maybe you've been through such a dark place or such a difficult time and finally you're starting to have fun again life is good life is great yeah okay financial gain usually coming from something you did in the past but i'm also seeing dolphins so i feel like you're in this carefree time right a dolphin is very free you're you're starting to experience what freedom means what it means to be free maybe you're in a time where you have less worries <clears throat> yeah could be like dolphin is your spirit animal at this time. Are you going to see dolphins? 
so that's really super lovely so this is my message for my lovely Gemini's thank you so much for watching if you want to book a private reading you find my details in the description box below I oh, know hope to see you next time let's move on to the next sign of cancer so my lovely cancers yeah. we have this full moon in Virgo in your third house and third house had everything to do with a communication <laughs> and you know you have Virgo who's also ruled who co uh, owns or co how do you say that rules Mercury so maybe you're starting this new study or um, yeah a new study a lot of you are starting to study or re just read a lot read a lot on the internet reading a lot of books and Mars is still in your 12th house I'm sorry <laughs> I know that it's a bit frustrating because when Mars is locked in the 12th house there's like this anger that cannot leave the body um, there's this restless feeling and you don't know where it's coming from it's because Mars does not have a, a have a good outlet and we're also going to have a square with Mars during this full moon so make sure to not overly um, use Mars so not do too many sports but not too little like it would be good to walk and to go for the things that you want right so maybe because work is good as well you have Venus you have Chiron you have Jupiter in the 10th house this is major 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 stuff when it comes to work so it's really good to not overwork yourself like you're it's like people will see you now and this heals this really this feeling of uh, I'm not seen is going to be like removed like people start to praise you um, maybe you get a promotion or a new job and people really see you in a different light but in a good way like wow cancer is this leader cancer knows what they're doing yeah so it could be that you just give yourself a break and you go on a trip um, yeah or maybe this new job requires you to study something on the side but there's this massive feeling of curiosity and with Mars in the 12th house it's also a little bit about hidden enemies like people that are like watching you in some way uh, people that gossip a little bit but you know if by the end of the day you deserve what the praise you get and you know if you worked hard for where you are at don't feel bad about it like everybody has their own time um, I always say I don't look at other people because I'm here for me I'm here for my journey and my lessons and this is the best way to go through life you know now it's your time and then another time it's someone else's time to be seen we're going through different stages in our life the good thing is that Pluto is moving out of the seventh house into the eighth so on one way this could mean that a relationship is or has ended and there would be a divorce or a court case happening to divide everything or you came out stronger more um, happy together right and then you will merge as souls that's the highest level of Pluto and if you're single you know uh, go out and about have fun but most likely at this time it would be in the workplace or in the public right if you're maybe on have a YouTube channel I mean if you want to do something like this or social media or TikTok, all these platforms it's a great time to do that with Jupiter in your 10th house okay parting ways of either romance or business so this is either your business or your romance you're leaving something behind or it could be that you're releasing the emotions of something you have left behind already letting it go romance is in the air because new love is coming <laughs> it's like new love is coming and for some of you it's just that you're starting to love yourself like self-worth I am I am who I am and I'm beautiful as I am maybe you were with a partner that put you down all the time 
and you lost this love for yourself and this is going to change now okay enemies are working against you yeah that's what i feel like people are talking behind your back okay um that's their problem right don't engage because this is the, with this full moon and this square the danger is that you will engage and then you know okay so i see something broken and then something new so definitely for some of you you're leaving something and then meeting a new person or leaving a job and then going to a new job i see a transition from one thing to another from one place to another one study to another you're transitioning from one place to the next so this is my message for you my lovely cancers if you want to book a private reading with me you find my details in the description box below and i hope to see you next time let's move on to the next sign of leo so leo for you we have this full moon in your second house right second house has to do with your money uh second house has to do oh i see i have a missed phone call <laughs> so if you hear like buzzing because apparently you can hear that through the videos second house uh has to do with your self-worth your money and with your moon there you're really going to revisit what you have what you would like to earn maybe you're working on savings right we have the sun we have neptune and we have mercury in your eighth house so some of you want to invest although with neptune squaring mars investing is not the best best time as you might overextend so don't put in too much money um because you might lose it okay or you know you might put in more than you could so it's time to really see your money budget your money and see what you really have in your pocket because a lot of you are also traveling going to travel with Jupiter there in your ninth house. I see Jupiter, Chiron, Venus all together in the ninth house. So a lot of you are either backpacking, you're studying. Maybe you want to become a yoga teacher. It's the right time now to take a trip to become a yoga teacher, uh, to start a new academic year, right? Where you're learning a lot, traveling, learning, curiosity, uh, meditation, mindfulness, starting a new faith. Maybe you find faith again. Maybe you were an atheist before and now you're like, I'm, I'm just seeing faith again. Or you're becoming a teacher. Um, a teacher can be many things, right? A teacher can be someone who is really good at teaching at work or you can become a literal teacher. But there is a part of you that wants to be free right with the with uranus in the 10th house you want to break free from work from maybe the nine to five job and if you do have a nine to five job you want to have the freedom to really decide okay this is good this is not good yeah okay money matters first thing that comes up danger especially money matters so this is an extra warning no huge investments right now okay saturn is also moving in your eighth house right eighth house is other people's money so pay attention to your taxes pay attention to your money how much do you have in your bank account don't um spend more than you have okay that's really an important message to give you also it's not a great time to spend or lend money to friends there could be a fight about that with mars squaring sun in the moon because Gemini is ruled by Mercury and so is Virgo. So, and Mars is about action, but also anger. So there could be frustration and anger towards money situations. 11th house is friends. So with your friends. Uranus is, um, you will have great ideas though, when it comes to how to make money with your work. Maybe you're, you're starting a side hustle or you have great ideas to bring in your work. You might find new ideas to present yourself. Uh, if you're self-employed, you might do new things that attract more clients. Maybe you're gonna uh, do something extra and this is gonna help you gain more prosperity and also more visibility. 
you need to defend yourself. So this might be in money situations. Maybe there is has been some unfairness when it comes to money. Uh, this could also be some of you are going through a divorce uh, or a separation and you need to stand up for yourself. This could also have to do with anything related to government and money, right? Like maybe you have to go somewhere, stand up for yourself, like, hey, this is the case. This is what I need to tell you. All that stuff. And then especially if your ascendant is very is between zero and five degrees uh pluto is moving into the sign of aquarius which is in your seventh house so you will see that a lot of things that were not talked about in your marriage or your relationship will come up there will be uh maybe a little bit of dominance happening on your side or their side and you really have to gonna talk about it like no more hiding from the shadow side of the relationship. This is what Pluto does, okay? Just putting out there what's out there. Okay, June. Some of you are going on a holiday in June. But I also feel that could be your birthday, right? If you have moon or rising in Leo. Uh -huh. There feels like there's an actual, like, divine support you feel like you're uplifted it's almost like your work is supported your faith is supported like you almost feel like there's an invisible guru that's really pushing you in a certain direction like with jupiter in the ninth house you have this guidance that you can't explain like i have jupiter in the ninth house as well and there is always this inner knowing and i don't know where it's coming from well i do know now but before i was into all of these things i was always feeling like my body just knew and this is what you're gonna go through the upcoming times okay unsettled times need to plan ahead so there might be some instability like you feel maybe your work is unstable um or the situation because you are going from one thing to another this is a very transformative time it's very scary for many people we have a lot of planet shifts a lot of uh, karmic cycles that are like going to be broken but the only way to break them is to face what is there okay last card for my leos major challenges to overcome some of you are literally doing a hike on a mountain I see you like climbing up a mountain and for some of you you feel like there's no ending to the situation but i'm gonna tell you there is really there is uh, especially if this is work when jupiter is going into your 10th house this will really increase your visibility when it comes to work okay this is my message for you my amazing leos Thank you so much for watching. I also do private readings. You find my email in the description box below. And I hope to see you next time. So let's move on to the next sign of Virgo. So sun, moon and rising Virgos. I'm getting a moment of silence. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe this is what you need right now. Like maybe you're so busy that you just need a moment of silence, right? Um, so this full moon is obviously in your first house and this is going to affect you a lot. And it could also be on your sun, depending if, you know, how it is in your chart. And I'm feeling like I'm stuck somewhere. So maybe you have this feeling. I don't know. I should start with astrology, but I'm getting so, um, I'm getting suddenly a sense of feeling stuck in life. I don't know how to move forward. It's almost like you're about to make a change. You know, this quiet time before a change is happening. This is what it feels like. Yeah. So we have our first and seventh house. So definitely for some of you, you might meet someone new if you're single, right? Saturn is moving into your seventh house. So you're taking relationships very serious. If you're single, you could meet someone new. You could go to a higher commitment with someone. And if you're not meeting someone, you're going to think about what it is that suits you best. You want someone that's as serious as you. 
And with Neptune there in the seventh house, some of you have definitely wore some pink colored glasses and you know, maybe you've dated someone that looked better than they actually were. And knowing Virgo, you're gonna beat yourself up for making a mistake, but really a mistake doesn't exist. It's about learning from that mistake and knowing that you deserve better, okay? Knowing that the person maybe you were seeing uh, could also be in the past, was not who they were, and it's not your fault. You wanted to see the best in a person, okay? But now you know the red flags, you can recognize it sooner. Jupiter, Chiron, Venus in the eighth house. For some of you, that can lead to an investment, maybe for your company. This could lead to an inheritance. Um, definitely, there could be some lucky money coming in. Could be from any source. Could be a sudden client. Like Saturn is going out of your sixth house. And Pluto, especially if you're first... Uh, five degrees or early birthday Virgo, you're going to feel that Pluto will start to transform your work and maybe brings up the shadow side of what you need to heal when it comes to work and your health, okay? Pay attention to your health. Go to the doctor if you need to. This full moon is also in a square with Mars, so there could be trouble uh, with your partner or a business partner, maybe a business partner and work, maybe you're working with your partner in business and there could be some arguments coming up, some arguments starting around this time. So pay attention to that. Really think things through before you make a decision. Uranus is in the ninth house, six styling, seventh house. So maybe it's almost like some of you will hear unexpectedly from someone abroad, a friend or a lover or a, yeah, maybe a friend and it turns into something more for some of you. <sighs> I'm getting this overwhelming feeling. It's just a lot. I feel like even though not much is happening, it feels like a lot is happening in your life. It's like behind the scenes, you're preparing for a new situations in the balance that require careful handling okay so even if you get for example an inheritance or money make sure to not share it with everyone if you uh resigning from your job or you know breaking from a business partner or something like this you need to make sure that you do it carefully that you really get your emotions especially you know people who have, are very sensitive like me that your emotions calm down first and then you make a decision. Shrewdness and resourceful, especially in business. I see this fox, so make sure that you know who you go into business with, right? Like a fox is very smart, but also can have tricks. So who has tricks? And is the money promise really the money you're getting? In the job, be aware of great pride, right? Um, this could be the other person as well. Maybe this is what you need. Maybe you need to be like, I'm worthy of this, that, and that. And this is how you get what you want. Because Virgo, you never ask for anything. Like, you just do. You're an element of action, like, moving forward. I know I'm like this. I just work. I do what I love. And I don't really care about, really, the business... Uh, situation like I'm good in business but it's like I'm not doing things because I'm thinking what it can uh, give me you know and sometimes that makes me a bit naive because I like what I do so sometimes I do it for too little money or you know I just uh, do overdo things and um, you know us Virgos we are straight up perfectionists as well successful outcome to your problems so you have the key Virgo you know what to do you know where to go next. A wish is granted. Look at that. Something is going to happen for you that you really wanted for a long time. This could be business, romance, and, you know, maybe not everybody is happy with that, but that's not your problem. <laughs> okay, this is my message for you, my amazing Virgos. Uh, happy full moon in advance, and I hope to see you next time.
Bye bye. Let's move on to the next sign of Libra. So my lovely Libras, this full moon for you is happening in the 12th house, okay? And 12th house has to do with everything uh, related to the subconscious, right? And moon is emotions and mother. So some of you will um, have some issues with the mother. Maybe your mother uh, lives uh, in a different country or on a distance and there is some trouble or maybe just with someone that lives abroad. There could be some emotions or some yeah some emotions can come up also towards work um because this full moon is um the full moon is when the moon is opposing the sun and this is in your sixth house and it's squaring mars so there might be some words when it comes to work maybe you need to travel for work and you don't want to um Maybe you're saying something about the job and it's not really. So make sure to first think things through before you speak up or complain about something in the work. The good thing is Venus, Chiron and Jupiter in your seventh house are all together. So this is a great time for you to meet someone new. Yeah, this could be on a trip. You're definitely in a really romantic magnetic um transformation some of you are starting your own family we have pluto very close to the fifth house so if you're not planning that make sure that you keep things safe you will really start healing your wounds regarding love if you're single and you're really preparing yourself for healthy love if you've been on unhealthy patterns. So you're going to have to go through these pains. But right now you're going to feel so good about it. So proud of what you've been through. That you're going to make a huge release when it comes to old pains regarding love. Because some of you have been hurt. You see, I'm getting the card success. So here we have it. A confirmation that you're going to be successful at healing yourself. Saturn is moving into your sixth house, okay? So pay attention to your health and you might get more responsibility in the work. So you're going to have to work more on your routines. Waking up a certain time, working hard. But we also have Neptune still there. So there might be some confusion like I want to work hard. But then we have a square, Mars squaring Neptune, which is like swimming. You do the best you can okay you do the best you can increase your efforts if you want to achieve your goals okay so you're gonna feel hard work some of you getting a new job maybe the job that you want and you're really going to feel what it's like to work hard and maybe some of you already working hard so it's not a problem okay <laughs> this is for people that haven't worked hard for a while and now it's kind of coming back this could also be working hard in the gym having a good gym routine okay i remember when uh, i'm virgo and my saturn went into six house i think two years ago and i started playing beach volleyball like i wasn't doing many sports and um, i was starting to play a lot of sports and at some point i was doing so many sports i was like whoa <laughs> and uh yeah i became super fit like you know um i had been through a health problem like my my heart was uh really in a critical situation and i i really had to wake up and uh, now i'm taking care of myself because of saturn there i'm really uh doing my routines i'm eating very healthy i already already did that but i needed to do more sports and i'm doing that now work achievement success look at that you're going to have good routines. You're going to like, and this is what's going to manifest uh, love into your life if you're single. Yeah, Caterpillar, things will not always be this way. A change is coming. So you're almost turning into a butterfly, Libra. You're on the verge of change. And changes are scary. I just want to let you know that, you know, uh, watch your money. So watch what you spend. Yeah, so maybe some of your money you're going to invest even. Yeah, so think things through when it comes to your money situation as well. So this is my message for you, my amazing Libras. If you want to have a private session with me, 
book a reading. You can find the details in the description box below. And I hope to see you next time. Let's move on to the next sign of Scorpio. So, Scorpio. For you, we have this full moon in your 11th house. And 11th house has to do with having fun. This has to do with um, the communities, right? And Virgo is very service oriented. So maybe you want to do some voluntary work. Um, you just want to go out with your friends. Maybe you're going to this book club. Um, because, you know, Virgo is very curious, wants to know things. Uh, wants to learn things. So maybe you like to learn things in groups. So like a book club or, or workshops. Uh, we do have Sun, Venus and Mercury in your fifth house. So, you know, have fun, be creative. Um, yeah, create things. Jupiter, Chiron and Venus in your sixth house. More work is coming. You're going to be more recognized in the work that you're already doing. So maybe you've been working on something and you're finally seeing the results. So 10th house is really about the public, right? It's more uh, about some say it's your true destiny. I'm not completely agree with that. I feel like the 6th house is more like your day-to-day -day routines, which is your health. So with Jupiter there, either you're doing more sports because it's in the sign of Aries, but also it can make you more self-indulgent, okay? But now you have the time to heal. Um, maybe you're working on your health now, healing that part of yourself. So either, I see these two extremes, you're either going to be self-indulgent with these placements or you're going to work on your health, right? Um, for me personally, I have a Scorpio moon and ascendant and I've been working on my health a lot. I've been working out a lot with uh, Jupiter there in the sixth house. So, you know, it can go different ways. Yeah, more work, more recognition. And also there might be something unexpected when it comes to your relationships because fifth house is romance and the sun is sextiling Uranus in the seventh house and also trining the moon. So there might be unexpected new person coming into your life when you're single. This could be through a dating app, online, this could be a message or just unexpected, right? Because um, the moon is in the eleventh house. So this could also be just being with your friends and you're suddenly meeting someone new. And I feel this excitement. And if you're already in a relationship, you're just going to find ways to be independent together with Uranus there. Or maybe you want to have fun. Uh, also, it's connected to the fifth house. So maybe you're deciding to have a baby, expanding your family, or just having a great time with you and the kids. Someone going out of your life and or the end of a situation. Hmm. We do have this full moon squaring Mars, okay? So this could be someone leaving your life as going through the other side. Or this could be you leaving your old self, like shredding skin and embracing a new you, stepping into a new life. Like if you're starting to have children, you're leaving behind a part of you that maybe before was out and about, before was doing all these things, and now you're becoming more serious. That's also leaving an old part of yourself. Celebration, fun, enjoyment, full moon in 11th house. Okay, so have fun with your friends, Go to this club where you meet people, like to learn together. Uh, go out with your kids. Have a good time together. Ooh, marriage. Like some of you are definitely going to commit to someone new. I feel this really happy feeling that some of you are going to meet someone. Because I know that uh, some of my viewers have been single for a long time. And there was a pattern that you had to break in order to find the right person. And this could have to do with boundaries. Like, you know, a lot of times when we think that we want to make someone feel comfortable, um, you agree, you become very agreeable 
and that becomes unattractive and that pulls away other people where and this is an out of alignment uh, energy for Scorpio who's more pulled back you are the magnetic sign you draw in love you draw in people I know this is a not a message for everyone but this is for people who have been struggling with love right and Scorpio you are the sign that's going through different cycles transformations so in order to attract love take a step back and you know draw in what it is that you desire you know instead of accommodating and and chasing because you are not the sign to chase doesn't mean you don't do anything for people. That's not what I mean. But it's energetically. you got to draw things to you. And then you respond to that. For most of you. Okay. I'm getting the same card for everyone. Caterpillar. Like transformation. And I mean, we have Pluto moving signs. Pluto is moving to your fourth house. Okay. So I don't want you to stress out. But this could be changes in your family secrets being exposed right um this could also mean death and i don't want to say these things but you know it's part of life some of you might lose someone in the family work achievement success it's like changing dynamics in your family okay good bad you know, it could also be that you will be reunited with a family member, actually, because Pluto can also bring up a secret and reunite you with, I don't know, your, um, maybe you were adopted and then you will meet your true, uh, your biological, not true, but biological parents, stuff like that, okay? Spiritual guidance, protection from harm. So you're being protected at all times. Good fortune. Good fortune. So I feel like a lot of luck is coming your way. A lot of fortune. I don't like to say lottery stuff, you know. But for some of you, if you do that, don't share it with other people. Yeah, and no big amounts at this time. No. Okay, that's my message for my amazing Scorpios. Thank you for watching. Uh, I do private readings as well. You find my email in the description box below. And I hope to see you next time. So let's move on to the next sign of Sagittarius. So my lovely Sag, for you this full moon will be in your 10th house. And this is all related to the public. 10th house is the public. It's your work. It's, it's uh, you know, and it's opposing the sun in your 4th house. Where it's also Mercury and Neptune. So your family situation could be a bit vague right now. And either you're going to put a lot of effort in your work, trying to avoid arguments with your partner or your family, or you're going to your family and avoid arguments with your, um, yeah, with your work situation. So there is a kind of a, a, a situation where you have a difficulty either with your with a business partner or a romantic partner, and you're trying to focus on one thing <laughs> and escape the other. That's how it feels. Uh, Jupiter in the fifth house is also about having fun. This is about maybe if you're single, you're gonna date around, meet new people. You're going to heal a big part of your inner child. You have a massive opportunity to heal your inner child right now. To really send love to you as a little kid. We have Jupiter, Chiron, the wounded healer. Heals, um, you know, in the fifth house is children, but also inner child, right? And we have Venus there. So you're healing your inner child. And that's why you feel secure enough to date. To date. <laughs> I'm starting to speak like a Spanish, like a Spanish, no, <laughs> I'm living in Spain for a while now, so, yeah, and um, it could be expansion of the family as well, maybe starting your own family, I see a lot of people getting pregnant this year, Not you're not the only sign, so maybe you've coupled up to one of the other signs that I see having children, Uranus in your sixth house is sextiling the fourth. So it could be that you're moving for work. 
Yeah. Or you're working from home. Working from home? Starting to work from home to avoid the office? Like I said, you're going to either... Or like you're going to put a focus somewhere to avoid something else. That's what it feels like. Disappointment in some affair, you know? This card is just adding up to what I felt. And maybe there is something you have to uh, expose. You have to talk about. But this full moon... <laughs> probably will force you to do it but if you can wait it's better when emotions are more down spiritual development enlightenment awareness and understanding yeah you see maybe it's good to to light in some candles and do a prayer for someone you know maybe uh you lost someone or you want to honor someone yeah, i feel like um Somebody really like ice cream here as well. <laughs> but yeah, it's like your inner flame is being awakened. Creativity. Um, maybe you're creating new things that you didn't know you could do. Or this was something you did as a child and you're coming back to it. I feel this really optimistic, restless energy. Like, let's go back. Let's do this. Let's do that. A journey, either physical or mental. You see, you're going to be taken to the next stage, a carriage. You're going to take yourself to a next stage in life. Saturn will be in your fourth house. So, you know, there might be some tough situation in the family. Like maybe someone is passing over or you have to take care of a family member. Pluto is moving to your third house. So you're going to be very curious. You want to learn about things. Maybe starting a new study and you're going to be really focused on that. Like Pluto is going to make you obsessed with learning Pluto in the third house. Okay. So that's my message for you. My amazing Sagittarius. I also do private readings. You find my email in the description box below and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Let's move on to the next sign of Capricorn. So Capricorn for you, we have a full moon in Virgo, which will be in your ninth house. And ninth house is all about traveling and it's opposing the sun in the third house, okay? So maybe you, some of you really need a break from work. It's squaring Mars in your sixth. Maybe you had some arguments at work and you really are, you need a break. Could be that some of you are close to burnout or uh, your health, you know, is not uh, as it should be and you're really up for a trip. Yeah, yeah, like I said, there could be some arguments at work, so make sure to stay calm and really, uh, because the square with Mars is really like a tension, you know, build up tension that needs to be released. Then Jupiter is in your fourth house together with Chiron and Venus, so there is a massive healing taking place when it comes to your home situation, your family, some of your buying a house, selling a house, moving. There is this sense of grounding. Maybe you feel more grounded in yourself, more secure. You're healing your roots. Maybe you're embracing your roots now. Before you weren't proud where you came from, but now it's like, I am proud where I come from. That's a beautiful place to be born from. <laughs> uh, you can take this literal weight as well. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Come on, I have too much Scorpio placements. My humor is too dark sometimes. <laughs> okay, uh, Saturn in the third house. Studying. Maybe you want to study something new. Uh, you could buy a new vehicle. Yeah, I definitely see a lot of studying. Learning something new. Yeah, maybe you're learning like art. Art, art, like some, you're good at like with making stuff, art, whatever that means for you. There's new ideas coming that you could do as a hobby or things that you, you can do. Maybe you're, you're selling something on a site online. Okay. New opportunities, possibilities and paths opening up. Look at that Capricorn. You're going to take this new door. You're going to walk through it. 
<laughs> I hear you're gonna be so loud and proud. <laughs> okay, fire, strong emotion, passionate love or hate. Yeah, I feel this more like a fire in you. Like we have this fiery energies in, in the fourth house. So it's like that you have a lot of energy to get stuff done. Maybe you're going to the gym, you're working out. But this fire can either go to passion. So make sure that your anger or your, your energy is used the right way for work or workout, but not for hate. A meeting with a stranger could be important. Okay, I'm seeing a handshake. So maybe a new agreement. Yeah, and look at that. We're gonna have Pluto moving into your second house, especially if you have first five degrees uh, Capricorn ascendant or early birthday Capricorn. Your Pluto will move for most of you in your second house. So there will be some transformation with your money. And Pluto does unexpected things, right? It can give you a lot of money or it can restrict it, but you have to see some type of lesson in that. It wants you to transform and to learn that maybe you lose something, but you gain it back double as much. This is what Pluto does. It takes away and it gives you something better. Like a cycle, eighth house, right? Rules, Scorpio. Like, takes away, gives back even something better so maybe even if you change jobs you know or you earn first less and then more okay so this is my message for my amazing Capricorn if you like this video subscribe to my channel I also do private readings you find my details in the description box below and I hope to see you next time let's move on to the next sign of Aquarius so my lovely, lovely Aquarius, your full moon in Virgo is in your eighth house. And eighth house has to do with other people's money. It has to do with uh, transformation. And, you know, this also has to do with papers, debts, money. Mm, and it's opposing the sun, Neptune and Mercury in your second house. So you're kind of really checking how much money you have and maybe you need to fill up some papers from the government like okay how much uh do i have to pay how much are the bills how much do i earn you know and this sounds like a boring message but you know these are daily activities that need to be done there could be some type of outcome when it comes to a court case uh or a, an interest in a cold situation like some of you are starting to manifest money writing down your desires when it comes to what you want to attract when it comes to money I'm not sure what i'm hearing here i feel like i'm hearing my cat like doing <laughs> crazy stuff somewhere um yeah but i love her so much <laughs> okay uh jupiter Chiron, Chiron is the wounded healer and Venus are in a conjunction together in your third house. So if there is something to restore with your siblings uh, or even spending time with them, this is the right time to do it. Maybe you're going on a trip together uh, or you're going on a trip without your siblings, but still there is some connection that can be healed over there. You could have really good communication right now with uh, your partner or with work. If you're a writer and you're publishing a book or some something online or a blog, like people are going to be very, very drawn to what you released because Jupiter will back your words up. It's like you're this wise teacher sharing your words. And uh, Pluto is very close to the Ascendant. It's on the last degree, 29 degrees. And it's about to go into your sign. So early birthday Aquarius or it's, uh, Ascendant between zero and five degrees. You will see major transformation in the upcoming uh, years. You're gonna feel like coming out a new person, okay? There are things that you're gonna have to let go of and 
if you were thinking, okay, I don't want to focus on this or I don't want to focus on that, Pluto will kind of force you to do that, okay? Don't be scared of this placement. Just go with the flow and let life guide you to the next place. Pluto wants you to let, you know, it's the planet of control, but it wants you to let go of control and own this inner power and this inner knowing on what to do next. So money coming in, money going out, organizing money, studying, learning, taking a trip. There could be some argument with children, if you have older children when it comes to your money, okay? So make sure that if they you lend them money, that you get everything on paper, right? Or if you lend money to a sibling or someone, make sure that you write down all the details on how you're gonna pay off or stuff like that and arrange everything. Time to go out and have fun. So don't forget to have fun, my lovely Aquarius, you know. Be out and about. Someone you know is undependable and insincere. Um, I feel like someone in your life is a bit flaky. Listen to your gut feeling. This is not a message for everyone, but I feel like you're hanging out with someone that you know it's not good for you, but you know this forbidden fruit that you don't want to eat, but you do it anyways, because it's exciting and new. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> and you know what it is about. Persevere and you will overcome your problems. I see this baggage on your back. It feels like this heaviness, right? And this is the time to heal things from the past heal this woundings maybe you thought you weren't smart enough good enough you're gonna change that perspective now and you're gonna let this baggage go goodbye <laughs> uh, you should accept valid criticism um this feels like maybe someone wants to help you or maybe someone is talking to you about this forbidden fruit and says is that such a great idea <laughs> you get mad you know and then realize later they were right i've been through that situation as well like people said don't do that or or don't date this person or don't hang out with this person don't do this job don't do this and you're doing it anyways <laughs> and you're angry at the good person and not angry at the bad person and then later it's the other way around yeah triumph over troubles and obstacles look at this bird i think it's an eagle overseeing overseeing everything so you will get more of an overview on your life you're gonna settle things you're gonna know how to do that okay so this is my message for you, my amazing Aquarius. I hope you will have a great full moon in Virgo and I hope to see you next time. So let's move on to the last sign, Pisces. And for you, we have this full moon in Virgo in your seventh house. So, you know, seventh house has to do with your partnerships, it has to do with your business partnerships. And there is this sense of, you want to commit to someone. So some of you are already in a relationship and you want to commit to a higher level, but maybe you and your partner cannot agree on where to live. So maybe you're like, no, we should live there. No, we should live there. Okay. Uh, or you would be dating someone that your family doesn't approve of. And this is because Mars in the fourth house is squaring the sun and the moon in your first and seventh house. Okay. So, there might be some disagreements between the family and your partner or your business partner. Maybe they don't agree with this collaboration that you're starting romantically. Maybe you're getting married to someone and they're like, is that the right person for you? Right? I cannot tell you if that's true. You have to listen to your own intuition. So Jupiter, Chiron, Venus, in your second house, are healing your self-worth, are healing your money matters. So you will see that you're more optimistic and money is just flowing into your life, right? Maybe you're getting a race, 
maybe you get more money. Could be through a side job or through commissions. There's, it's easier for you to attract money at this time, okay? And it's also your intuition is so spot on. It's like you just know what to do and where to go. It's like Sun, uh, Neptune and Mercury in your first house. Yeah. But, you know, there might be, if you're single, a new distraction coming in. <laughs> and this person can blur out a little bit where you're going. Saturn is also moving into your first house on the same day on the same full moon um so you know responsibility this can come through a relationship a commitment a marriage this can come through a new job you know maybe you're making a lots of money but you have to work harder for it but you know some of you don't mind that at all because you know pisces and virgo are the signs that love what they do most often these people go for something creative and they're not super focused on money. It just flows into their lives. So this is kind of the situation. And then Pluto is slowly moving into your 12th house. So you're gonna be working on a subconscious level. So in the upcoming years, the people that come into your life, especially when you're early born uh, Pisces between zero and five degrees ascendant, and also early birthday Pisces, um, you will see a lot of projection happening with Pluto in the 12th house. You will attract people that are showing either your shadow side or something you're lacking. So keep your eyes open if you feel really triggered by someone or very drawn to someone. Very often this person comes into your life to show you a certain lesson. But definitely money is good. Uh, some of you are really in this place where you're, you're either studying something, learning how to deal with websites maybe, studying something scientific, or even studying uh, astrology. But I also see like investments or how to work maybe with cryptocurrencies. Good news. So Pisces, good news is coming your way. <laughs> Someone working against you behind your back. Well, this happens when you start earning a lot of money and people can see you're successful. Like not everybody will agree. This could be either a family member or um, this could be like a landlord. There could be trouble with the landlord as well or with someone that you live with. Maybe a roommate misunderstanding, right? There could be a misunderstanding happening. People don't see how hard you work behind the scenes, you know? They're just assuming. It's like, oh yeah, because you're this and that, or this is why you have this. You know, maybe you just earned it. Maybe you just earned this money. Which you do. April, okay. April? Something with April. Um, maybe you're, you're booking a holiday in nature. It's very specific. Um... You need more flowers in your home as well. April is also the month uh, of area season, which means sun will be in your second house, which means even more money could come in. You will be playing a different role, right? So this could be through a new job or um, through something romantic, like maybe you meeting someone new this is why you're playing a new role. You would have more responsibilities, but also more success. Situations in the balance that require careful handling. So you're gonna have to make a lot of decisions, but there is also a lot of success coming your way, a lot of money. Maybe you have locked through certain investments and they're coming back to you. Like, I hear your hard work is paying off. So that's really what you deserve. And that's my message for you, my amazing Pisces. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I also do private readings and you find my details in the description box below. And I really hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.